Hey folks, this is Jason Holland. I'm the roving Latin America editor for International Living and um, I happen to live in Mexico. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, residence visas in Mexico, which is a big topic uh, that people who are interested in moving to Mexico want to know all about. You know, how do you get a um, permission to live long term in Mexico? Now, first off, uh, let me lay out uh, the tourist visa situation. So if you've ever visited Mexico or you've even been on a cruise, you've gone to a vacation in Cancun, you've driven across the border, you do know that you do need a passport or uh, you could also use a passport card uh, to get into Mexico as a tourist. When you come in as a tourist, generally you get up to 180 days on a so-called visitor visa or tourist visa. And and you fill out a little form at the border or on the airplane or at the airport. Um, there's actually two parts. There's a long uh, piece of paper that you hand in uh, to the border official or the immigration official at the airport. There's a second part, a little card that fits right into your passport that you keep and you give back when you leave Mexico. So that proves what date that you entered and then you turn it in when you leave and that proves what date that you left and that you have not overstayed the 180 days. So it's very important uh, when you do visit Mexico that you keep that extra little card uh, because they're gonna ask you for it when you leave and if you don't have it, uh, you will have to pay a small fine uh, to the immigration officials. Now, if you plan to live in Mexico just part-time or uh, you just wanna come for an extended stay, that's pretty much all you need. Um, a lot of part-timers, a lot of snowbirds who come to Mexico maybe just from January to March or January to April, uh, they'll just get on a tourist visa and they'll come on down, enter as a tourist, and then leave within 180 days. And that's pretty much perfectly fine. Um, now, there is a caveat there uh, because if you plan to live in Mexico, you don't really want to do that. Uh, for one, Mexican immigration officials are really looking for people who plan to settle down in Mexico to have a residence visa, which I'll go into in just a moment. And uh, also, if you're just there on a tourist visa, you're not gonna be able to take advantage of the national healthcare system, and you are not gonna be able to take advantage of the retiree uh, discount card, which is available uh, for older folks who, in who are in Mexico, including foreigners who are official residents of the country, and that gives you discounts on travel, movie tickets, um, prescriptions, all sorts of stuff, you get discounts, but you have to be an official resident and you don't get that on the tourist visa. Okay, so let's say you're not a tourist, you know you wanna settle down in Mexico. Uh, you basically have two options. Um, there's the temporary residence visa and the permanent residence visa. And both basically require you to show some level of what's called financial solvency, uh, that you are able to support yourself uh, for money coming from outside of Mexico. Uh, generally with these visas, uh, you can't uh, come and pursue a job of some sort in the country. Uh, so basically you have to show that you can support yourself and whoever happens to be with you, whether it's a spouse or um, you know, children, uh, that you can support the family uh, when you're living in Mexico. Okay, so let's start with temporary residence visa. Okay, now basically the requirements are such. And this basically can change depending on the exchange rate, uh, but basically you have to show a monthly income, could be a pension, could be um, income from investments, uh, or from a business you have in the US in some cases, um, that's coming from outside of Mexico. It's 300 days worth of the Mexican minimum wage on a monthly basis. And of course this changes based on the exchange rate. Right now, it's right around $2,000 per month. You can also show about $30,000 in an investment account, a savings account, or some such like that. And that basically shows that you have enough money to support yourself uh, while you are living in Mexico, and that's in US dollars. Of course, that changes a little bit based on the exchange rate. Right now, the exchange rate is very favorable to the US dollar versus the peso. Uh, due to this ongoing, you know, pandemic. And the, so this could change, and uh, the, the, uh, the level kind of changes from year to year a little bit as well. Okay, so that's the temporary resident visa. 
uh, if you want to bring your spouse in with you, um, you also have to bring uh, have to show that you're prove that you're married. So marriage certificate when you apply, and if you have children, uh, you also want to bring a uh, birth certificate to show that these children are related to you. Okay, now how do you apply? Well, you do not apply in Mexico. You apply at a consulate in your home country. Uh, the United States, for example, has dozens of consulates all over the country, from Florida to Washington State, from Maine to Southern California, Texas. There are consulates all over the United States. All of these consulates do have websites, so you can easily find them online. Uh, they also have physical locations, of course. Uh, you make an appointment, generally you do this online, and then you go bring you all your paperwork. You have your bank statements, your um, income statements, you have your marriage certificates, birth certificates, things like that. You bring that to the appointment and you show that to the official. Uh, they check it over, they give it a good once over. You also have your application that you filled out online and you print that out, you submit it, you have a little photo of yourself. And they give you basically a temporary residence uh, form that goes into your passport. And then when you enter Mexico officially, when you're at the border, the land border with Mexico, or you enter by plane and you get your passport stamped to immigration, you make sure that you do not enter as a tourist. You wanna make sure that that official knows that you have your preliminary residence, you're applying for temporary residence or permanent residence, as we'll see in just a moment, and you get a special stamp in your passport. You have 30 days from that moment to go to the immigration office in Mexico where you plan to live and finish the process. Basically, there's some more forms you have to figure out, uh, fill out, uh, some fees you have to pay, and then your residence visa is processed. Generally, you cannot leave Mexico during that process. And then about 30 to 45 days later, depending on the office and how busy they are, you get your official residence visa. For a temporary residence, you can get it for one, two, three, or four years at a time. Uh, renew If you get it for a year, you renew it uh, for another year or another two years or another three years. You can be a temporary resident for a total of four years at a time. At the end of that process, you could renew and become a temporary resident again, or you could move to the next level and become a permanent resident. Uh, just a quick thing about the temporary resident visa. As a tourist or a temporary resident, you can actually bring in your foreign plated car. So if you drove from Canada or from anywhere in the US, you can have your foreign plated car in Mexico with you for the duration of your visa. So if it's a tourist visa, 180 days. If you have a four year temporary resident visa, you can have your car in Mexico for up to four years. Uh, it does have to leave the country when your residence visa, whether it's a tourist visa or a temporary resident visa expires, that car does have to leave the country. Okay, so a uh, quick question here we had, uh, would Airbnb rental income in Mexico count towards your minimum income? No, it would not, uh, because the money does have to come from outside of Mexico. And a lot of the consulates uh, do uh, want to see the Mex uh, income coming from outside of Mexico, and they want to see a very stable income. So this could be social security, a pension, they want to see money in the bank uh, that's guaranteed, um, you know, generally not something that could be uh, sporadic or could be subject to market conditions, uh, like right now where Airbnb income has dried up um, and people who are depending on the income do not have it anymore. So Mexico wants to see a very stable income to count towards this, um, this uh, amount, basically. Um, so now we move on to permanent residence. Uh, you do not have to be a temporary resident first to become a permanent resident of Mexico. Um, you do have to show again that you're financially solvent and the requirements are a little bit more stringent here. Uh, basically, um, you do have to show about 500 days worth of the Mexican minimum wage on a monthly basis and that works out right now to about $3,200 or about $130,000 in the bank in an investment account, a savings account of some sort and that would qualify you for permanent residence. 
As I said, you don't have to be a temporary resident first. You can become a permanent resident right off the bat. Um, this is indefinite. You don't have to apply again. You get it once and you're forever a permanent resident in Mexico. There are no minimum requirements to stay in the country either. Um, you can come and go as you please when you're a permanent resident. So that's the resident's visa, the permanent resident visa. Now, one kind of uh, disadvantage for some people, uh, if you're a permanent resident, you cannot have your foreign plated car uh, as you can as a tourist or a temporary resident. So if you choose to have a car, which you definitely don't need in many communities in Mexico, uh, you would have to buy a car in Mexico. Okay, so um, those are the residence visa options in Mexico. Uh, it's, I have to say I've done it myself and it's a pretty easy process. I went to the uh, consulate in Laredo the day before I crossed the border. Uh, I had all my documents, uh, showed them my paperwork. Uh, took about an hour to all told from when I was in the waiting room. Um, when I talked to the official, they asked me a few questions. They reviewed my bank statements and they reviewed my application and other paperwork. Um, then I was processed. I had my te you know, provisional residence and I finished the process in Playa del Carmen at the immigration office there. Um, it does help that I do speak Spanish, although that's not a requirement. Um, if you feel like you need some help, if the bureaucracy or the red tape kind of uh, intimidates you, uh, or not speaking Spanish intimidates you, there are definitely fixers and attorneys uh, throughout the country, especially in expat hotspots, uh, that can help you. Um, they know the immigration officers, they know the process. If you have uh, special circumstances or uh, specific questions, these folks can help you for a nominal fee um, to get your application processed and get it through. Um, and let me ask a few questions. Um, my father was born in Mexico. Would that enable me to become a Mexican citizen with dual citizenship? Um, I'm not as familiar with the citizenship process, but I do believe if you do have a parent that is a Mexican citizen, uh, you should be able uh, to get Mexican citizenship yourself. I would check with your local consulate, give them a call, or uh, set an appointment online to go speak with an official there. Uh, from what I understand, some of the offices, right now at least, are um, seeing fewer visitors uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, you can also try to contact an attorney in immigration law to find out more about the dual citizenship process. But you can be a dual citizen, Mexican U.S. Uh, citizen, so that is definitely possible. Now, uh, Thomas asks, how, can, how long can you spend on one stay annually as a tourist? Well, basically, your tourist visa is 180 days. Um, at the end of 180 days, you do have to leave the country. Now, some people uh, basically do a little what they call a border run. Uh, they fly out of the country or they cross a land border and they come right back in the same day or the next day or a few days later and do another 180 days. I mean, technically, this is legal. However, uh, the Mexican immigration officials um, don't really like that uh, policy uh, because they feel like if you're doing something like that, uh, you are trying to get around applying for residence and just living in Mexico on a tourist visa, which is a no-no. Uh, so that's kind of the situation there. Technically, you can become a perpetual tourist and just keep coming in and out of Mexico as you please. But if you plan to live in Mexico long term, uh, you definitely want to become either a temporary or permanent resident. Um, let's see, Michael asks, so you cannot bring your car at all if you're permanent. Okay, so... There is a caveat there I should have mentioned. Uh, if you do have a special car, if you do have a rare car that you do want in Mexico, you could officially import it into the country as a permanent resident. However, it uh, would be subject to very high taxes. I'm not sure what the rate is, but in general, it's high enough uh, that most people don't want to go through that process. There's a lot of paperwork, there's a lot of bureaucracy involved, and there's a lot of taxes to import your car into Mexico from the United States, Canada, Europe. Uh, so most people don't bother to do it that way. They end up buying a car in Mexico if they're a permanent resident. So that would be on a case-by-case -case basis. You know, if you, if you had a very special car uh, that you didn't want to leave behind, uh, you'd want to check more into that, but it would be a costly proposition. 
Okay, sorry, Lori, let me go back to you. Um, you ask, why would we want to do this? Well, um, basically, you want to become a resident of Mexico, if I understand your uh, question correctly, uh, because you want to live in Mexico long term. You want to take advantage of the national health care system. Uh, you, and if you're a retiree, you want to take advantage of the, uh, the health care card. Uh, if you plan to just visit Mexico for extended periods for a few months at a time, or you maybe you're going to spend part of the year in Mexico, or maybe every few years you just want to come down to Mexico and spend several months at a time, you don't have to worry about residence at all. Uh, you could come on a tourist visa, perfectly fine. And uh, as long as you stayed uh, only within the 180 days time limit that the visitor visa or tourist visa uh, gives you. Let me just check here to see if there's any other questions. Okay, so Thomas asks, uh, he's never obtained a visa to go for a week or two in Mexico. Well, technically, you got a, a no, uh, most likely a, a visitor visa, which is a little form, and they give you a special card to give you. Um, you know, even for just a week or two at a time, you do need to fill out a form at the border or at the airports. Um, you know, it's basically a little tourist visa or a visitor uh, permission. Uh, they may not have called it a visa or anything like that. But even if you do come in as a tourist, you do have to um, register with immigration um, and uh, get a form uh, showing that you're in the country and, uh, and you give that form back uh, when you leave the country. Okay, so those are the residence visa options in Mexico. Um, I'd encourage you to check out the link uh, below. Uh, basically, it goes to the International Living Mexico page and you're gonna find information on resident visas, everything that I just talked about, uh, as well as other information about destinations in Mexico, healthcare in Mexico, the cost of living. We have uh, basically all the information that you need about going to Mexico, living in Mexico, all the benefits it offers, uh, the best locations for expats, and uh, we're talking from the beaches uh, to the colonial cities to you know everything in between. Um, you know, I love living in Mexico. I found the residence process to be you know quite easy. I think a lot of expats do as well. Um, so hopefully we'll be getting out of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic soon. Uh, so that people who do want to visit Mexico, travel has basically been suspended at this point, uh, so that people want to live, you know, visit Mexico, come to live in Mexico, so you know, they can come on down, check it out, and see what it's all about. So um, thank you very much. This is Jason Holland, the International Living Roving Latin America editor, uh, signing off, and uh, let's, I hope to see you soon here in Mexico. So take care.